Hi, everybody. I'm Kate Murray from the Library of Congress in FADGI, and I'm just here to give a brief introduction um, before I really turn it over to the stars of the show um, about our work with FFmpeg, um, uh, which FADGI has some support for, um, to continue our support for captions and timecode. And I'm also going to uh, hype my swag, so we have FADGI bookmarks, so I hope everyone takes FADGI bookmark there, out there on the counter. Um, Dave and Jerome will cover the nitty gritty, but just as some background, um, this work was grounded in a FADGI project immediately before the pandemic to evaluate FFE1 and Matroska for use by FADGI members. And Charles Hosale and I went to visit Blake McDowell at the National Museum of African American History and Culture the day before lockdown back in 2020, and we did some testing, and what we realized that while the structures for timecode and caption support within FFE1 and Matroska were established or well on their way, um, there were some gaps in the tool set in FFmpeg to support complex timecode and captions, especially with TTML, which is a major component of the RDD48 uh, MXF application. Um, this was a roadblock specifically at the Library of Congress for expanded use and adoption of FFV1. So FAGI, which is led by the Library of Congress, wanted to improve the tooling on behalf of the wider community and eliminate this barrier. So we contacted with Dave and Jerome to work with the FFmpeg community to research and make the changes over the last year or so. Much of this interest at the Library of Congress revolved around the library's recommended format statement, or RFS, which until just a few weeks ago included FFV1 and Matroska as an acceptable format for content without captions or timecode. But there was very strong interest from some communities, especially but not limited to public broadcasters in the US, to have the Library of Congress accept FFV1 and Matroska. So the moving image content team for the recommended format statement wanted to be able to move FFV1 and Matroska from an acceptable format to a preferred format. I won't go into too much detail about the RFS here and how we make those decisions, but we have an evaluation matrix that we use for all formats, which includes both global community factors and local institutional factors to give us a framework for discussion and decisions. We have a sample matrix available on our website so that others can tweak these for their own institutional needs. And most importantly, acceptable doesn't mean not as good as preferred. In some cases, it's not an issue with the format or its capabilities, but rather the, libraries, the Library of Congress's ability to manage the format, as was sort of the case with FFV1 and Matroska. But this work with FFmpeg allowed us to improve the tooling and make the changes in status for FFV1 and Matroska. And you'll hear more about this in an upcoming blog post on the Signal, in which we'll share with the No Time to Wait community. Um, Thanks to the great work of, uh, this is just my shout out page, the great work of Dave and Jerome, as well as the Library of Congress home team, especially Laura Davis, Rachel Curtis, Morgan Morrell, Charles Hosell, Andrea Lee, Mike Michon, and more. And I'm gonna turn it over to Dave and Jerome. Where's my slide? Oh, this isn't the version of you oh, editing yeah, sorry. it. Sorry. <clears throat> I'll just improvise until then. Um, so I just thought, like, I don't know, I'm very happy that No Time to Wait is back in Prague this year because it was, I think, in 2015 that the Internet Engineering Task Force was here, and um, Jerome and Tessa Fallon came here to present and defend um, a proposal for a working group of the Internet Engineering Task Force to standardize FFV1 and Matroska. Um, and that kind of helped lead into uh, the No Time to Wait conference that happened the, the following year in, in Berlin. Um, with this uh, work that Kate's mentioning, there's always like these little incremental efforts side by side in the standardization of the format and then the implementation of the format. So, <clears throat> uh, slides are back. <clears throat> so, um, I think this happened in 2021. The IETF, uh, the Seller Working Group, finished their work on the FFV1 specification. Uh, so, it's released as this RFC. Um, so this is a, the, a lossless video encoding. Many people in this room have been involved in its history, development, advocacy, uh, and now it is a sort of officially st standardized with the ITF, so um, that fact kind of helps encourage more of the implementations to occur. Viv um, Matroska, um, oh, and by the way, these are the documents of the Seller Working Group, so FLAC is involved. Um, a bunch of these documents are related to Matroska. And then at the bottom of the standards for eBML, which is a binary XML format that Matroska is based on, and FFE1. Those two are the publications already. 
<clears throat> and then just during this week, I had to update this because um, Matroska is in, that specification is in its final stages. Uh, it went through a big review and a voting process by the Internet Engineering T Task Force, Inter no, sorry, the Internet um, Engineering Steering Group. And uh, a, a bunch of nitpicks come back and last questions. Um, those all got finalized, so now it's been moved over to the RFC editor at the IETF, um, basically just to work on the formatting and the presentation of the standard. Um, so the current status, I think, is the RFC editor has acknowledged that we've responded to their latest questions, and we're waiting for them to proceed through their uh, editorial work and possibly come back to us. So another example I wanted to make about like the incrementational development of the specification and well, the, the, the development of the standard versus the implementations of that standard is the work on the CRC element of eBML, which is part of um, Matroska. So in eBML, once we had standardized this, um, this aspect of the format that under each top-level element, there could be a CRC, just a checksum that protects all the content of that element. So if you think of... Um, like a Matroska file is this like nested set of folders. The folders can contain checksums of the folders and documents inside it. Um, this had been written, I think, back in 2004 or five in the eBML specification, but I, I had never seen it implemented. But once we had the specification written, then in FFmpeg, they implemented it and just turned it on by default. So pretty much any Matroska file you get coming out of it that it isn't a live stream will have CRCs embedded in it, into it. They realized that this was like so little overhead in the encoding time that it was worth just uh, turning it on by default. Uh, so one of the things um, we're working on getting implemented is getting time code into Matroska. So we ended up working on this document um, like an intermediate document just called media timecode that could document any type of timecode track. So at the top you see timecode tracks that are based on uh, presenting an initial value and some incrementation data on how those timecodes should increment for continuous timecode tracks. But another type of common timecode track is with every value independently stored. And that's where you could have um, non-continuous timecode. <clears throat> so the aspect of the... Um, Oh, yeah, I missed that slide. So there's an aspect of the specification called the block addition, and basically all the encoded audiovisual data is stored in these uh, elements called blocks. And the block addition just lets you map on tags onto that. Um, so it's used for uh, dynamic HDR data, and it also can be used for uh, timecode values, basically like any tag you would want to associate to a particular audio, video, or, or subtitle frame. Um, so, uh, I don't know, I can ask Jerome some questions. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no. um, we, uh, we can work with, with this uh, intermediate uh, format, time code format. We can extract, for example, all the time codes uh, values from the MXF. We can edit, so if we need to curate the time code, we can do it. And then we are developing uh, for the Library of Congress uh, an update of FFmpeg supporting this uh, XML as input and in order to put in the Matroska container all the time code. So step by step, we reduce the gap between MXF and uh, Matroska. So um, as uh, Kate said, Currently, uh, Matroska FAV1 is recommended when there is no time code, no captions, and we, we work on having Matroska supporting time code and caption the same way that it is supported in MXF in order to have a fully lossless conversion of, of uh, the content from MXF to uh, Matroska, including the time code and the captions. Yeah, it already had been the case for a while that you could do a lossless conversion of the audiovisual data of, say, JPEG 2000 and MXF to FFV1 and Matroska and vice versa, but that wasn't the case for all the, the data streams like timecode and some of the captions. Um, you know, so uh, we've been tediously nitpicking through. This command at the bottom is um, from a patch uh, Jerome's written for FFmpeg to basically take uh, timecode out of this intermediate document I was showing before and it, attaching that into a Matroska document. So you could map timecode uh, values into a video track, um, you know, in the same way you would like stream copy using FFmpeg from one container to another. 
Um, currently, it is in our own build of FFmpeg, but we are cleaning up the code and we, we, we will send the code to the FFmpeg team in order to have a, a review from them and to be integrated in the master branch of FFmpeg. So, for the moment, it is easier for us to have a demo with our own build because we can show that how it works, but definitely the idea is to have everything in FFmpeg directly. Um, I will say, Jerome, that um, we have taken off the disclaimer in, on the recommended format statement that b previously we had said for um, uh, collections without time coder captions, we have taken off that disclaimer thanks to this. So, yeah, we're, yeah, so that's a good thing. So. That's it, folks. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I thought there was a question, but there wasn't. Other questions? Hello, to the uh, lady. Uh, you don't uh, feel a little bit uh, doubled because part of things are uh, standardized by AITF and part in SMT. You, duality, how you live with this duality? Life is duality. But no, I will say that um, uh, Fagi uh, a year or two ago supported a mapping of FFV1 into MXF in RDD 48 Amendment 1 in SMPT. Um, and, and I don't feel any tension, and I think most folks at the library also don't feel any tension, the fact that um, MXF is standardized through SMPT and FFV1 and Matraska through IETF. I personally find the standardization process in IETF more transparent and access accessible um, than I do in the SMPT standard, and I'm a member of the SMPT standards community, um, but I think it's a lot easier and more transparent for anyone in the community to follow along in IETF than it is in SMPT. So um, I, I find both standards processes to be as um, complete and as, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, to a great level of detail. So yeah, I, I don't see any stress there about supporting both communities. Some folks will use SMPT, some folks, pardon me, some folks will use MXF, some folks will use FFV1 and Matraska. Our goal is to be able to provide the maximum amount of capabilities in either format. So no matter which one you choose, you have the same, um, you know, you could have the same content in both. I can add that I, th I think traditionally a lot more audiovisual formats had been standardized through SMPT, but gradually over the last few years, like IETF was doing more and more audiovisual standard um, standardization, um, just because audiovisual data was more and more a component of the internet. So, like they standardized the Opus audio codec, um, which is often used sort of behind the scenes for communicating in Skype and Zoom and other formats. Um, I don't know, but just like the internet is containing more and more of our data in every single form, so it's, you know, sort of less tied to, like, the exclusive, like, broadcast community that, you know, kind of started with, that, you know, where SMPT started as a, a default place for standardizing those formats. Cool. Thank you.